Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we are going to be talking about BlizzCon 2014. A lot of really, really cool things came out this weekend. We're going to be talking about how Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass are reuniting for another Bourne film. And we're going to give you all of the TV shows that have got new TV shows that got canceled and renewed. Stay tuned. Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Yes, and Brendan must duck and cover because Chewbacca, uh, he's not too happy hey man, with Chewbacca him. Chewbacca Chainsaw is nothing, nothing to scoff at. Or Brendan was supposed to do something for Chewbacca. Out. We won't get into it too much, but Brendan did not do that thing for Chewbacca, and now Chewbacca is very angry. All right, I'll give you a hint. He was supposed to rub his feet. And I don't blame Brendan for not wanting to rub Chewbacca's feet because they're very dirty and stinky. He does not wear shoes. They also are pretty hairy, and they feel weird. Yeah, so... I would have done it just to keep him off my back, but hey, uh, he didn't ask me. He asked you. All right. But yeah, tonight is our entertainment night because, you know, it's Monday. That's what we do on Mondays. We just talk about movies, TV, and video games. Yeah, that's how we roll. But, uh, so let's start. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, Brendan, what are you going to say? Nothing. Like, what right, am I going to say about that? <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> nothing. He's going to say absolutely nothing about this that. This is the worst setup for a joke ever, if that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but let's start it off this week the same way we start it off every week, and that is the five reasons why not to watch this horrible movie of the week. <laughs> and if Brendan Face didn't just say it all. <laughs> but yeah, so this week uh, I watched a little-known movie. Uh, now, it did have two semi-big-name actors, and uh, I'm going to say semi, like like... C plus list actors in it. Uh, Matthew Marsden was in it, and also uh, Christiana Loken was in it. And uh, thank God Christiana Loken was in it, because or else it would have been even worse. Uh, but yeah, let's just jump right into it. It was called Bounty Killer. Uh, well, just a basic basic setup of the movie is pretty much we're in a post apocalyptic apocalyptic. It would be nice if I could say apoca apocalyptic. See, once apocalyptic. I get my, once I get stuck on a word like that, it's just like, I know how to say it. I really do. But then I can't say it for a while just because I got stuck on it. You know what always gets me? Proprietary. That always gets me. I never get that out right. You got it out right that time. Well, I know because I wasn't stuck on it. Once I get stuck on it once, then I'm screwed. It's just how it goes. But let's let's not divert from the movie. Okay, we were, we were talking about Bounty Killer. So it's set, it's set in apoc- an apocalypse. See? Apocalyptic. There you go. It's set in that type of world um, where pretty much corporations took over and ruined everything. So, you know the basic setup of the movie. All right. So, it's Final uh, Fantasy Seven. Kinda, kinda. <laughs> but in this world, you have bounty hunters, which are instead called bounty killers, because they are hired to kill the white collar criminals that kind of led the world astray. But, uh, yeah, so let's just jump into number one. Number one leads right... Just It's 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 just so obvious, like, a flaw in the movie. So, okay, so if corporations have destroyed the world, they've just, just taken over and they've ruined everything, you even have to hire bounty hunters to go and kill all these old corporate executives. Um, why would you make your leaders... Okay, so the people who hand down said bounties is a group called the Council of Nine, okay? And I don't know about you, but when I think about a Council of Nine, I think about a board of directors. And what do board of directors usually run? Corporations. So why would you make your leaders, the shadowy group of people who nobody actually elected, into the people who really are supposed to help you get your world back in order? Just It just, it just sounds like if you don't like corporations... Why make a corporation structure to take over after everything's gone wrong? Because clearly it was corporations that made the corporation structure so that they could control how the resistance would operate. But that's that's, that's but that that's that's how they dispute that like the whole time. It, it, it's like not supposed to how it be how it works. But 
Yeah, okay, so just obvious flaw, just in the first five minutes of them explaining what's going on with the movie, and it's just like, wait, what? This this is no good. And I gotta say this, that the whole corporations take over the world is like one of my favorite type of things, uh, like movie settings. It doesn't really happen right very often, but if, if they could get a good movie that does it right, it would be amazing. You know, the shadowy corporation. I, I just like that setting. You know, the post-apocalyptic... Damn it. Future. Apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. <laughs> Apocalyptic. There you go. But yeah, so that that is, you know... Okay, so why put a board of directors pretty much in charge of everything? So yeah, that was number one. Okay, number two. Okay, so all the people that get bounties on their heads, um, they're white-collar criminals, but they're called yellow ties. Because, you know, they wear ties. I, I don't know why yellow ties, but that, that's what they're called. So you get a bounty for a yellow tie. You go out and kill him. He's a white-collar criminal. Well, just for some reason in the movie, all of those said bad guys do walk around with yellow ties on. Like, hmm. it's like, hmm, if I don't want to be hunted down and killed, maybe take off the yellow tie. Switch Does it anyone to... else wear a yellow tie? Nope, only the bad guys. <laughs> and it's not even supposed to be the same group of bad guys necessarily. It's a bunch of different corporations. So it's like that, that's the that's the post-apocalyptic gang signs. Yeah. Yellow ties. Yeah, yellow Only badasses wear yellow tie. But then you get killed by badder asses because these bounty hunters are supposed to be like really cool people. Like they're it. it that's why like, it's what? so ballsy to wear that yellow tie. You're yeah, like, but like one guy is is trying to no walk problem. around like he's. He's wearing a little zip-up, kind of like what I'm wearing here, a little zip-up sweater, and he's talking to people, and he's trying to convince this one bounty hunter to come to the, his side, and she's like, no, what are you, one of the yellow ties? He's like, no, I'm not a yellow tie, and then she ends up killing him, and then unzips him, like, you were a yellow tie. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really? Like, really? Uh, so, yeah, that was that. But uh, number three, let's just keep it moving. Okay, so even though everything is a wasteland, like the, wherever they are in the country, everything is a wasteland. It's just desert and desolate, and you see no vegetation almost anywhere. Somehow, every single person's car in said movie looks like it just ran through a car wash. It looks like it just got a new paint job and wax. No dust on anything. Apparently, post-apocalyptic dust, I said it, yes, uh, dust um, does not stick to these cars anymore. Well, I, maybe they previously made stain dust resistant cars. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's okay. what broke that. That that's what killed uh, the entire world, because then the car wash industry collapsed, and that was the last thing. Given the the common man, some say I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. You're stretching it too far. Stretching it too far, but yeah. So, all right, let's keep it rolling. Let's go to number four. Um, and this is really just kind of some. I, I it, when I when this happened in the movie, it was already bad to this point. So this what 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 I'm about to say happened about halfway through the movie. I was already not enjoying the movie up until this point. But this is literally the notebook I was holding. I threw up in the air with like just disgust, because at this point. They tie three motorcycles together, put them in front of an airstream, and then put some reins on said motorcycles to pull the airstream. And that's like a trailer, like a, you know. And he goes, giddy up, and the motorcycles take off. <laughs> what you do? That is not possible. That will not happen. I, I, what, There's no ridiculous. real point to doing it that way either. Like, that's not... Like, <laughs> even if they, the motorcycles would go, like... Why would you set it up that way? Why? They're like, hey, this will look cool. And no, it looks stupid. Stupid. So, yeah. Okay, so that was that. All right, and number five. Uh, so at one point, the main character's running off to go to, the, to see the Council of Nine because he gets a bounty put on his head. And... He, it, it's just the ending... They're like, here, we're going to throw a big twist at you that you'll never expect. And it's like, okay, a big twist that you never expect that makes sense makes a movie great. Like, mm -hmm. The Sixth Sense, when you find out, oh, he's dead. Oh, spoiler alert. That's how we do spoiler alerts here on Words From My Face. I say it after I spoil it. But, <laughs> but Bruce Willis, you're like, oh, he's dead. That makes sense. Everything makes sense. Okay. So their twist is just like, this is the stupidest twist ever. Yes, it's possible, but it's just dumb. 
Should I just tell people what the twist is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Just okay, so the main bounty hunter, the guy who's the first bounty killer ever, um, is actually uh, the leader of one of the corporations who helped destroy the world, and then he decided after the world was destroyed, he didn't want to help the corporations anymore and wanted to kill all the people. And so the Council of Nine was like, hey, we're the Council of Nine. Why don't you join us? And he's like, no. There you go. There's the twist. That, 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 that. All right. Yeah, yeah. Did that, did that, that forward the story at all? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It just let them kill more, <laughs> a little bit more towards the end. It, 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 it was just like, okay, so... All right. That's a thing? That sounds yeah. like backstory rather than a twist. Yeah, yeah. Kind of does, doesn't it? It's, like, it's Maybe that's like... something that they could have told us in the first ten minutes. Yeah, they're like, it would add a little depth to the character. Hey, this guy used to be one of those jerks, and now he turned his back on them, and... And now, now he leads a resistance or something, you know, that that yeah. sounds like that, that would be a setup for. But no, no, it's just like, okay, hey, remember you used to be uh, the leader of this corporation, and the Council Nine wanted you to join, but you said no, you wanted to kill people. Well, hey, we're your evil corporation that's left over. You want to lead us again? And he's like, no, I want to kill you. And you're like, wait. I don't care. And then you sh- got to get shifty eyes. Yeah, yes, shifty. <laughs> shifty shifty eyes. eyes. Because that was meaningless. <laughs> yes. <Absolutely>. So, <laughs> yes, so that is my five reasons why you should not watch uh, Bounty Killers. Um, now, I will give you one reason to watch Bounty Killers. No, I don't want this. Her name is Christiana Loken, but you could just like Google images of her. She's very pretty. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. Still, this movie gets one and a half Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, save yourself the trouble. And I did want to mention that it's made by a group called Rain Dance Productions. And it just, that just doesn't sound like a good production company. I don't know. I thought I had heard... A, well, no, that does sound like, I guess, Rain Dance, though. I would rather Rain Man production companies. Or Sundance production. Whatever. But anyway. Sundance is like a film festival, so... Yeah, that's why I would think that you know, they someone to try and do it, but someone might say that they're being a little uh, presumptuous if they did that. Yeah, well... Someone like Brian. Yeah. Because I'm very presumptuous here on the show. All right, so our new... <laughs> 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 but okay, so let's 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 purge that from our memories and move on to the next topic of the night, and that is um, something that I hope is pretty good because uh, it was pretty good so far. And we're going to be talking about uh, the new Bourne movie. So apparently, in the year 2016, we're going to be getting another Jason Bourne what? title film. 2016. And- and Matt Damon will be returning um, as Jason Bourne. Uh, the, what the backstory behind this is, Matt wait, Damon. Wait a second, original... wait a second. Before you go on, before you go on, this is going to tie in with the DC universe, right? This is one of those big plans, and Ben Affleck will play opposite him as Batman. <laughs> there you go. It'll be Batman against Jason Bourne. Yes. The they're doing Batman against versus the rich billionaire. Doing Batman versus. Uh, is... Batman's going to turn into the new Godzilla. It's just going to be every movie is just a versus movie. <laughs> just Batman versus, Batman Godzilla versus, versus Batman. Jason Bourne. You know, that would be pretty cool. I would be down with a bunch of Batman versus movies. That would be, just especially if we can get like just different characters from other universes. Like Honestly, Batman versus Godzilla would be an interesting movie because I bet you he'd figure out a way to get him bring yeah. him down. Yeah, because you get he sets up some electrical lines in some way, but he has to do yeah, he plan it out well. That, that that's the kind of thing Batman would do. He would do right? that. Would. And, but this would make so much sense because we've talked about before, most of the DC movie, superhero movies, fail miserably or yeah. mediocrely. They sometimes they're whatever, but they're not that great, except for the Batman franchise. But if it's all if it's all Batman, a Batman versus superhero or other hero, they then it might work. Shot. You, you can get shot. everyone in as long as you just make sure Batman's in it every time. <laughs> as long as Batman is the star of the show, as long as it goes Batman versus somebody else, you're good. So that's why it's Batman versus Superman, not Superman versus Batman. You know? Exactly. 
But yeah, so so Matt Damon, um, he did walk away from the franchise a couple years ago after Born Supremacy, I believe it was, uh, because he said he didn't want to do a Jason Bourne movie without director Paul Greengrass. And now Paul Greengrass was like, okay, uh, we did, we had fun with it, but I think I'm done with it for about now. So Matt Damon stayed true to his word. Uh, when they re-signed Paul Greengrass to direct the next one, Matt Damon signed up. Uh, so we are headed for another Bourne film. No word yet as into the story, but I could probably tell you what's going to happen. It's probably going to be about the same as the last three. Um, leave me alone. I don't want to be haunted by you guys anymore. Well, hey, you're a super spy who knows a lot of secrets. We need to get rid of you. Hey, you have a project called Treadstone. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and a lot of action ensues. Now, you don't watch the Bourne movies necessarily for the story. The first one, maybe. Um, you watch it for the cool action and the cool spy action. So I, I did enjoy those movies for that. But you also had a Jeremy Renner version of Jason Bourne, but he was Al Aaron Cross or something. It kind of took place in between two and three uh, while Jason Bourne was still running around and they were shutting down the Treadstone program and it showed some of the other agents. But so my curiosity is, number one, are they going to get rid of Jeremy, Jeremy Renner's character? Because that was actually a pretty fun character um, in terms of the reboot of the series almost. Not really, but they, they kind of went a different road. Mm. Um, and I and I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't think you should totally get rid of Jeremy Renner's character. Unless it's yeah, Unless you want to make a uh, kind of a split ties and do do this. Like it is several years later. We're on a fourth movie. Like you could argue that the first three are kind of a. We're on the fifth movie because if you count up. Jeremy Renner's movie, this is the fifth. Oh yeah. Well, I don't even remember that one coming out. Like, did that do well? It was the Bourne Legacy. It didn't do great in box office, but like I said, I did see it. I did enjoy it. I thought it was fun. It was a different take on the Bourne um, franchise. I feel like they that must have in... done the worst of all the of all the Bourne movies, though. So that that also might be a reason to just cut anything from it. Yeah, but I mean, again, it wasn't bad. It was actually very enjoyable. It just kind of gave you a different look at this whole Treadstone project. And the Treadstone project, if you don't know what that was, um, that in the Bourne films was pretty much the Super Soldier project. Uh, mm. They 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 showed you how they kind of made these guys, and they were using different like drugs and stuff to make them smarter and faster and more agile and stuff like Captain that. Captain America. Yeah, it was, yeah, like I said, it was a super soldier project. <laughs> but uh, but in the Born Legacy, they showed a, another one of these so-called super soldiers, other than uh, Matt Damon, who was one of the first and arguably the best. But I would like to see maybe a, a team up between those two because Jeremy Renner is a good actor uh, in terms of action flicks. He played in Mission Impossible 4 and I thought he was really good in that one. Um, as Hawkeye, I have enjoyed seeing him as Hawkeye in the, the movies he's popped up as. So mm. I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind seeing those two guys come together. That'd be pretty cool. But it does I beg the question. I imagine they would go a different direction though with, at, at this point. Return, with a director returning um, and bringing back Matt, Matt Damon how long has it been since Supremacy, or what was what was the third one? Supremacy or Ultimatum? Uh, I believe it was Born Identity, Born Supremacy, and then Born Ultimatum. I think that's how it was, and then Born Legacy. Yeah, so, but it's been yeah. at what at least what seven Three? years? No, no, it's not been more than four years. I don't think since that since that one came out. So I mean, it's years. been a while. It hasn't been that long. Four or five years at most. Because I want to say okay. Legacy well, then came we, out about we, we might ago. see still link up. I was gonna, I had thought that it had been longer since then. In which case, you might try to really do a kind of cut uh, with other stuff and take in a new direction. But yeah. but we'll you, you never know what's gonna happen. But you know, it does beg the question. Whereas I'm not opposed to seeing another Born movie. Do we really need one? I mean, yeah, I do like the Super Spy, but. Are they trying to make a new James Bond franchise? Is that kind of what's going here? Because James Bond is a super spy that you can bring back time and time again, but that's more because he's fighting on the side of good and you have all these evil people popping back up. But Jason Bourne just seems to be always running from the government who keeps trying to track him down. So do we need do we need another Jason Bourne? See, the, the difference there, though, is something that else that appeals to people, this idea that of shady government activities and guy that opposes his that role essentially is opposing the shady government and that 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 has a place too but the question is 
how often can you do it? Because if it's like you said, the same story over and over, it's it's the same story over and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I was gonna say, look, we also already have another um, uh, James Bond in the, the Jack Ryan films. Essentially, you know. Yeah, but they haven't really done too much with that. Now, the Christopher... Not in a little while, but they did, they did a lot of movies of that, though. Yeah, I mean, they did the Shadow Agent, but that's that's a little more spread out. They don't really... You don't really realize a lot of the Jack Ryan movies are Jack Ryan Jack movies. Ryan movies. Yeah, I mean, other than the fact that they have Jack Ryan, but they don't seem like a sequence. Yeah, like oh, Hunt for Rod October, I believe that's a Jack Ryan movie. Some of all fears. There's clear and present danger. I think Air Force One... Um, is where Jack Ryan becomes president or something like that. And... Or defending the president. No, I think Jack Ryan is president in Air Force One. Really? Well, I thought he was he was the guy tasked to like recover the president from Air Force One in, in that movie. Mm, well, I, in I the know, movie, at least, I think he wasn't. It's been a while. I, I, see, yeah, it's been a while, yeah. Um, but they don't really advertise that. Like, James Bond, you know you're watching James Bond. Mm-hmm. You know? They don't quite brand it like that. And, they, and you know almost Jason Bourne, you know you're watching a Bourne film. Yeah. That's what you know. Um, so I'd say you know it's a well too. Uh, you, did you know Indiana Jones was supposed to be a, essentially a uh, rival to James Bond? Mm. Yeah, he's Originally, a bit it was it was uh, how it came about was um, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas were sitting around, and Steven Spielberg said that he wanted to direct a James Bond movie sometime, and Lucas was like, "No, nah, I got something better." I got a better character like that, and it was Indiana Jones. And uh, I'll say, you know I, what? I, I, that would be pretty cool to see Steven Spielberg actually do a James Bond movie. I think he would do it very well. Yeah, I, I think he's kind of satisfied with the Indiana Jones movies at this point because those were awesome movies. No, I'm not hating on those movies. But, but definitely, yeah, if he someday decides, hey, I'm going to do James would, Bond now. I think he would do really good as a James Bond director. I think that would be pretty cool, especially with Daniel Craig in there, that cast. That would be good for him, but... I yeah, feel so, like he would probably bring in another new actor. Being yeah, Spielberg. So, is, is, a, is another Bourne movie needed? Um, are you excited to see this? Should they team up with Jeremy Renner and Matt Damon? Let us know. Hit us up. Comments well, down below. Of course, even have better idea. on Twitter. Huh? Let us know down below. Oh, that's oh. that's what I say. Either okay. Batman versus... Uh, oh, yeah, Batman Jason versus Bourne. Bourne. Batman Bourne. versus Bourne. Or James Bond versus Bourne. I see. Or, no, Batman versus James Bond. Versus Bourne. Or three-way death match. And throw it Jack Ryan. Just yeah. call it. <laughs> Batman versus Bourne versus Jack Ryan versus, who is the other one? James Bond. Yeah. Four-way death match. Okay, hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. I said I was going to stop saying that last week. But Words My Face.com, Google Plus, Facebook. Always good ways getting a hold of us. And let's keep it rolling and move on to the next topic of the night, and that is TV shows. New TV shows, I should say, that have been canceled and slash or renewed. Um, now, a lot of these TV shows, you'll be like, huh, I've never heard of that one. It's probably why it's on the canceled list. And if you're like, huh, I enjoy that. Probably why it made to the renewed list. But let's start with some of the renewed TV shows. Um... Now, I'm really only going over the new shows this year that have been renewed, and not all of them have quite gotten their renewals yet, but this is about the time right before Thanksgiving you start hearing about them, and they'll start bringing out some newer shows that might replace them in those time slots after Thanksgiving. But so we have Blackish, you know, that is the Michael... Well, I know Lawrence Fishburne's in that one. That, got, that one got picked up for the full season. Um, How to Get Away with Murder, which is a really cool like drama murder show, I believe, on NBC. Uh, that actually got renewed for another season, so that one will be picked up. I believe that was the highest rated of all the new TV shows out so far this year. Um, you have Madam Secretary with Taya Leone as uh, you know, the Secretary of State. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, a show that you enjoy, Brendan, Scorpion, has been renewed for, uh, picked up for the rest of the season. Ah, there you go. So uh, that one will be there. Um, of course, and, like, this one wasn't even close. Like, you knew this one's going to at least get picked up for 10 years just because of the name of it. NCIS New Orleans, uh, that has been uh, picked up for a full season next season. So that yeah, one. I guess I'm, do they simultaneously have three or just two now? Do they I drop believe the they have all one? three still going. They have uh, NCIS, they have uh, so, Los Angeles, and, well, you know what's weird? So is NCIS, the the the. Sp- Rip off of the same concept as Law and Order has gone the same route as Law and Order. 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is a CBS trend over the past couple of decades, or at least past decade. Uh, if you remember, CSI came out, and then they had CSI Miami, and then they had CSI New York, um, and all three of those shows, I believe, were running simultaneously. And yeah, they and might still like be running time. And um, what was it? Uh, Law and Order. Then Law and Order didn't go the route. Well, Law and Order, but SVU. I, I believe they they didn't run those simultaneously. The only ones they ran simultaneously, I think, was SVU and Criminal Intent. I could well, be I thought wrong. I they still were making the, the the original two. And then they also came out with with an LA one or something like that. Um, but that oh, one yeah. didn't last very long. But the no the original yeah yeah the original Law and Order I believe ended its run uh, last year or the year before that of uh, something like twenty seven years or something. Yeah, like but that. but SVU has been out for like a long time too, and so yeah, it's criminal. It's been out for almost twenty now, so. so I think that they did overlap with all of them. Yeah, yeah, I, there might have been all three overlapping at one point. You're right. So I mean, is that no? That's an NBC show. CBS just seems to like to do that though. So NCIS New Orleans is going to be coming, keep going. And now I do like Scott Bakula. I've I've liked him ever since Quantum Leap, so I'm glad Scott that guy's still back here. Yeah, and and if you watch the show Enterprise, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. <laughs> so yeah, he was in that one. What you were expecting out like of Star Trek? Huh? It just wasn't what you were expecting out of Star Trek, really. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, and then shows that I've really enjoyed so far, um, Constantine. Now, it has not been fully renewed as of yet, but they are very, very close, it says, to picking it up. They have picked up, I believe, another three or four scripts for this season, uh, so it's looking like it's going to be picked up. And I've been hearing that that has been the ratings juggernaut. Uh, Grimm, followed by Constantine, has been huge for NBC on mm. Friday. So, Grimm's been so. actually very good. I've been watching that lately. So there you go. I mean, you have two kind of paranormal detective shows going on back to back. A little bit. They have different flares to them, definitely. But I've thoroughly enjoyed Constantine so far. Uh, I still expect them to get him to be a little bit more of a con man, a little bit more of you know. But he's he's still he, you know. I just gotta let the character develop. I I just can't expect everything all at once from him. And I yeah. think that's my my problem. And but I'm still I'm still giving it a shot. I've been watching every Friday, so and I've enjoyed it. I have not I've not been like oh I wasted my time watching the show. No, I've been like oh that was good. I enjoyed it, you know. But they could just still do this much more. Um, so we'll see how that goes though. Uh, the Flash has been picked up for the rest of the season, and Gotham. I believe they renewed it for another full season. And Gotham has been pretty awesome. I am about three episodes back, but I think they've introduced Zaz in there which is a cool character. He's a serial killer from the Batman universe. And I think this week they're going to be introducing, uh, or tonight actually, they introduced uh, Black Mask. So mm. they're, they're, really, they're really starting to get some of these characters in there. Uh, the Falcons and the Maronis, you know, the two crime families, you hear about those more in, in Christopher Nolan's Batmans than you do in some of the other Batman. Yeah, in, in Batman Begins especially a little bit. But... Yeah. Um, so they're out there. They've been thrown in there pretty well. So I've really just enjoyed the whole Gotham series. Uh, they're kind of showing Bruce is working on his detective skills and stuff like that. And so, you know, showing world's greatest detective is in there. And I just like Jim Gordon, uh, the, the aspect they've been taking with him. So it's just been, I, I've really, I think of all these shows, uh, if I'm going to rate them in order of ones that I really liked, well, I guess I'm going to have to rate them in order of ones that I've really seen. Um, <laughs> would be uh, uh, um, probably number one. My favorite so far is Gotham, and number two is Constantine. I caught an episode of NCIS New Orleans. Uh, that was all right. I haven't really gotten into Flash yet, but I'm excited to see that. I really like the Green Arrow. And then I know you said Scorpion was really good, so... I mean, we had you, we've gotten some really solid, good new television this year. So watch it. But I don't know. Hit us up. Let us know uh, what you think. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's a lot of action. That's a lot of action uh, television too that we've been getting this year. Yeah. Just uh, that's the thing. But hit us up. Let us know what you think. What the best new show is that has gotten renewed. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter, uh, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways of getting hold of us. But let's run down some of the sto the shows that have gotten canceled, and you will notice a theme. Um, Manhattan Love Story. That was a uh, ABC show canceled. Uh, it was kind of a like a romantic comedy type story, I believe. Uh, Selfie, another one of those romantic comedy type slash Sex in the City, canceled. Utopia, a horrible, horrible reality show by Fox, was canceled. 
But then you have A to Z, another romantic comedy type TV show, canceled. And Bad Judge, canceled off of NBC. And that had um, Kate Walsh, I believe, was in that one. So, yeah, you so had a couple of we're seeing the axing of the romantic comedies and the rise of the action. Well, the rise of almost the comic book action, too. So that's... Mm-hmm. that's yeah, we're, we're in an interesting part... Uh, part of, you know, the just media in general, because movies, we talked about it a couple weeks, or was that, not, yeah, it was a couple weeks ago, um, the huge uh, you know, comic book media presence in movies and you're seeing it rise up in TV big, uh, so I hope we don't burn ourselves out on it, but I, I just don't see that happening. I love that stuff. Well, not anytime soon, anyway. We got we got plenty of milk for a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eventually, probably things will, will curve off as they've, you know, gone through everything, but... but we I mean, we didn't time. see such a big explosion, but, like, the 70s had some with the Wonder Woman's TV show. You had Incredible Hulk. You had the the end of the Batman TV show. You had the Superman, uh, you had the Superman movie startup. Uh, so, I mean, you, you've, you've seen this kind of... It's almost cyclical. So, they went through all the, the good storylines in the 70s, and now we have all the storylines from the 80s and 90s that they're starting to go through. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool. So, hit us up, let, you know, let us know if any of those shows that you thought were that were canceled you thought were good. If so, you must like romantic comedy TV shows. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah. But let's, so let's take that and move it into one of my favorite parts of the night. And, and that will be Quick Hits of the Night. Okay. And so the first Quick Hit. I need. I, I didn't do that right. Quick hit. Nah, yeah, I, I, I'm a little off tonight. Sorry, guys, with my quick hits. But it's uh, Pepsi is now testing a Doritos flavored Mountain Dew. I heard about that. I, they're testing on like college campuses right now. I think, right? Maybe some games. Like, hey, you college kids are stupid. Let's see if you like this. Yeah, I heard that it tastes like um, if you ate a bunch of Doritos and drinks about to do at the same time. Yeah, not, not thinking what you that expect. that's a good mixture. <laughs> not thinking that that's the greatest mixture. I mean, cheese flavor is great for a lot of things, but for my liquids, I don't really think cheese flavored is where I want to go. Yeah, but I can see what the, where they're going at. Uh, at least, you know, the the college, like gamer, for instance, that's the classic food. You have your Doritos, you got your Mountain Dew. Your yes, but not. Stuff. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the same time. Yeah, I know Think about not. How horrible your breath would smell it after, all, after drinking. It all mixes food. together once you've once you've eaten it, right? And if you're just taking a chip right right now, and then you wash it down with your Mountain Dew, you're getting the same effect, aren't you? But you just don't get as you much drink, of the crunch. You and I kind of like that crunch. You can drink it and tell me how it is. How about that? All right, if I get my hands on some Mountain Dew, you want to send me some Pepsi? You want to send me some? I'll you test it out. I'll, I'll let people know. You will drink it. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. There we go. That was better. Uh, Jared Leto is in talks actually to be the Joker in the Suicide Squad movie. What? So, yeah. Um, and I think he would actually be, be another a, one a, with that too, right? I do like Jared Leto. I think I, I like his band. Not all of their songs, but I like a good amount of their songs, 30 Seconds to Mars. Um, and I think Jared Leto, the Oscar winner, uh, would actually be pretty cool as a Joker. For 30 Seconds to Mars too. Um, to this, to to playing the Joker. Well, he started out as an actor, I believe. Oh, he was in like my so-called life or something when he was young, and then oh, he okay. was in a band, and then he kept doing acting. So, well, well, cool, good on him, good on him. Yeah, you know, be versatile, my man. Be versatile, and, spread it out. And I better know in the next quick hit because it better be related. Um, you didn't see the news. Let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is, um, I have no idea if this is what Brennan is expecting, but Macaulay Culkin is not dead. It was an internet hoax, everybody. Everybody who's like, oh, he's dead. No, he's not. Not at all. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I, uh, um, those internet when, death hoaxes are so weird to me. Yeah, uh, did, I've heard that Morgan Freeman every once in a while has to release a statement saying that he's not dead like every few years because <laughs> it comes up often and sometimes people like start sending flowers to his family and things. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> his I'm not dead, sometimes, yeah. I'm still alive yeah. and I have the smoothest voice in all of media. Yes, you do, Morgan. Yes, you do. But let's move on to the next quick hit. And I'm going to interject. 
Okay, but the spinner weapon. Fist. Okay, go ahead. So, Interject. Uh, Margaret Robbie to play Harley Quinn Suicide Squad. We already talked about that when we talked about the Suicide Squad movie. We didn't talk about what she would play, but we told we, she was in there with Tom Hardy and Will Smith as. Uh, has she signed in on? I don't believe she's. A yeah, she signed on as Harley Quinn specifically. As Harley oh, she Quinn. did sign on as Harley Quinn. Okay, so that'll be interesting. That's what I heard. It's anyway. from the Wolf of Wall Street. So. I could actually see her if you put the face paint on her, and she has the voice for it. She could do that crazy voice. So yeah, and then you're gonna see her uh, playing alongside Joker now, and so now we know the Joker. We know we know Harley Quinn. And yeah, but I don't think which I is interesting because I don't think we've seen that in, in any of the Batman movies. Well, I don't think Harley, Harley Quinn only came about from the 1990s animated TV show. I don't believe she was even in the comics until after they put her in the TV show. So uh, that's that's an interesting role. But as I hear it. Um, she'll be part of the Suicide Squad with Lex Luthor leading them, and you'll probably see uh, the Joker be the main antagonist. So they'll be mm-hmm. trying to bring down Joker. Somehow. Well, that's going to make things even more interesting because Harley Quinn is, of course, super devoted. That, that we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll probably yeah. have lots to talk about when but, that comes out. Yeah, exactly. We we I mean, yeah, we had an, a really cool Suicide Squad one. We kind of introduced you to what the Suicide Squad was. So check out that video if you haven't already. Um, but lots more to come. Another conversation probably down the road. So uh, yeah. So let's move it on to the la- the last quick kid. It really wasn't the last. I had another one, but since I got all messed up because Brendan interjected, it's now the last. Um, so this weekend's box office. Now, all right, you know what? I'm gonna put it in there. Uh, the spinner weapon has been added to Hyrule Warriors, and all you got to do is link your amiibos uh, to the game, and uh, you get it. Yeah. Brendan, well, I mean, it. as soon as the amiibos come out, there. Huh? So we're, I think we're still waiting on them until like later this month for them to actually uh, sell. Okay. But, but it's so been when announced your that they're comes, gonna work. You'll, yeah. you'll be able to make a spinner weapon on High yeah. Rewards. With specifically the, the Link Amiibo. Uh, other Amiibos do random stuff, but the Link one gives you a cool weapon. So there you go. So and all you Wii U owners weapon. out there, get ready for that. It's coming. But let's move on to the last quick hit. And that is the weekend box office numbers. Now, Big Hero 6 came in number one with $56.2 million in box office, low, uh, domestic box office. Followed up by Interstellar with $50 million in box office numbers. And Gone That's Girl came in third with six point one. And if you remember last week, we had one of the worst box office weekends I've ever seen. I want to say all of the top ten did not add up to $50 million. So... Yeah, crazy. but there, that this was really big for those top two. Um, yeah, that was a big drop off between the top, the second and third. Well, because all the money went to the top two. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, last week the top two had ten million dollars each. So you know, and then like three and four and one, and so you mm-hmm. know, it really was a pretty big drop. But that was the quick hits of the night. No more. No more slashes? Ah, okay. I was just, you know, I'm, I'm expecting a couple more slashes. One more, one more, one, one more, one more, one more. Okay, okay. One more. One more. Uh, All right. Okay, no more. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about our video game. BlizzCon 2014. Yeah, no so that's what you. happened over the weekend. And uh, BlizzCon, if you don't know what that is, that is um, Korea's favorite holiday. I'm just gonna say it. They love they love BlizzCon. So um, BlizzCon, sponsored by Blizzard, of course, is just where they come out and say everything Blizzard. So there was a couple mm-hmm. really cool things that came out. Um, we'll just run down a couple of them. Now they announced StarCraft II: Legacy of the Void will be a standalone game this year, uh, it's coming true. out. Actually, I'm sorry, 2015, I believe it's coming out. And in my notes, I say uh, there is no copy of StarCraft II needed actually to play this game. So it's not an expansion. It will be a standalone. That makes and a lot of sense Koreans considering rejoiced. how old uh, StarCraft is at this point. If they want to bring new people into the, the franchise or get people back, then it makes sense not to require them to go buy a game that's, what, seven years old now? Yeah, is StarCraft II that old? Yeah. People have yeah. been waiting for this expansion for a long time. So, yeah, it's well, just the right other expansions do. along the way, but, yeah, they've done enough. They get, yeah. get a new game. Yeah. Um, and so, but the story will predominantly feature the Protoss, uh, it kind of is going to wrap up the story that happened in StarCraft 2. 
So you'll see what goes on there. Now, they did announce a new PvP mode. It's called Archon Mode, where you have two mm-hmm. players controlling the same same group. So, you know, two sets of players can oh. set their guys to to build stuff and all that things and attack so in you, different you formations. New team dynamics, you, you delegate out who's taking care of different parts of the... the Whatever, I guess uh, that that like, okay, is pretty build a base over here. I build a base over here. If you know, if something happens, you can move your forces more in tandem. Or, and stuff or like you that, take so. care of uh, internal matters. I'll take care of uh, external. Yeah, the, you, the, you do yeah, resource. I'll do uh, exactly. Mike so. building the fights, and you take care of making sure we have all the resources and building ready for all this. Well, who knows? That, that could lead to so. Uh, and you know what? Strategy. That's it's a pretty huge. cool mode too, because it's like you could okay. I know how to play. What if you have a younger brother or something like that or sister that wants to play with you? Okay, well, here, let me teach you how to play. This is how we can play, and you can get used to it, and we'll be on more than just, just a general. Yeah, yeah you, you start mentoring well, abilities to yeah. a new extent. Yeah, exactly. And and I could see this because, again, in Korea, this is a huge thing. This is their, this is their NFL there. Um, this is going to add just a new way to play the game. It's going to give them, you know, the tag team almost, but except for both guys are in the ring at the same time. So, you know, it's going to kind of give them that new dynamic. Uh, and, and I could really see that changing the way the game is played. Now, of course, the single player will probably stay about the same, the PvP single player. But, it, you know, it's always nice to get a little bit extra, you know, a little bit more in there. And so that'll be a pretty cool thing. So that was uh, the, your StarCraft news. Um, now, Hearthstone, that is the really super crazy popular, uh, I believe it's free to download, card game almost. It's almost like a magic game. Um, yeah, it's where... almost like straight ma- I guess there's some differences, but yeah, it's, it's very much like Magic the Gathering online. Yeah. So, and, and like I said, it's a hugely, insanely popular game. Um, they are announcing that there will be an expansion coming out uh, where they will be giving you 120 new cards to play with. So hmm. that's a pretty... Okay. And I believe there's only about uh, 200 cards to begin with or something like that, so that's a pretty substantial expansion. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to start doing it kind of like Magic the Gathering and just releasing a new set of cards every, like every year or so. Which, I, I mean, it probably wouldn't be too hard to do that. <laughs> you know? It wouldn't be a bad idea either. It just it keeps the game fresh, right? It just keeps people yeah, playing. People, you, they enjoy it. They keep coming to it. And I know there is plenty of ways to make money off of even these free-to-play games. So if they just keep doing it something like that, it'd probably keep people coming back. So, you know, it's cool to see. And the free-to-play, I mean, you don't have to pay for it. You can you can play it for free. Now, the people who are usually the best at those games put too much money into it. But what can you do? What you sometimes do? baseball players with lots of money. That's the clash of clans. You didn't want to go up against the Royals team because they just threw so much money into their team. But yeah, there was at least three of these billionaire guys playing it. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there you go. But uh, so th- another one. Um, they showed off two new posters and a bunch of props for the new World of Warcraft movie and told people that you need to pick a side for the movie. And I think they relaunched a new website for it as well. So the WoW movie is underway. There's actually a pretty big cast going to be there, I believe. Travis Flamel from Vikings, he's in this. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of other big-name actors. I, ca- I can't rattle them off right now, but there were, I was looking through the other day a list of all the actors that have already signed on for it, and there's like probably a dozen ones that I recognize. So... They are really come going underway for this WoW movie, and uh, you know, I just hope that they don't try to make it a movie that tells the overall story, and they decide to take it just okay. Let's just talk about this time, this one thing, and kind of make it their own thing rather well, than. You know what I would imagine they would do, given the trend of um, how Blizzard has handled Warcraft, the expansions, the the continual story. I would imagine it's going to be. A, a standalone, not not exactly a standalone story, but not something that's been told. This is going to be something um, that expands the story thus far, and okay. may, they'll probably maybe uh, even make a game that have uh, or an expansion for after the movie's release that deals with something that was changed in the movie. Some of the fallout uh, from the movie. Uh, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I would imagine that they'll like kind of wrap it in. Like it won't be something that you play necessarily in the game. But it'll be something that will relate to the game in that it'll be like some big events just for the movie that incorporates the story thus far and progresses the story 
further yeah. into and whatever can, next stage. I can, I can see that. That would be pretty cool. You're right. Uh, because I believe a lot of their expansions, now I'm not a WoW player, but uh, I believe a lot of their expansions, they say, okay, this event happened, and now you get to deal with the fallout of this event. Um, mm-hmm. So... Uh, like they had the Dark Prince when he came up Warcraft 3, you know, he got his powers and all that, and then one of the expansions you had to go fight him. You know, he became powerful. Boom, okay. Yeah, and they, um, they Cataclysm, sort of the dragon comes out and stuff. Okay, now you gotta go fight. But yeah, they could show, yeah. okay, this is the event, and then in the game, it, and it probably would bring a lot of people back to WoW, because uh, it's been kind of tapering off. Now, don't get me wrong, I think they still have about 7.1 million subscribers a month or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're still bigger than anyone else, almost. But at their height, they were about 14 million, I want to say, so they have kind of fallen off the top of the mountain, but the mountain's just kind of gotten chopped in half, so that's not their fault. Yeah. I don't know. That's a weird analogy. Yeah, they're still doing. They're still doing great. <laughs> and this yeah, is so, like you know, people are still playing this game that came out how many years ago now? Two thousand three, I want to say. Yeah, I want to say two thousand three, two thousand four. So, and I bet you they've made well over like five hundred million dollars off of that game. So they're they're not hurting. They're not hurting. Um, and then the biggest news coming out of BlizzCon, well, my opinion for the biggest news coming out of BlizzCon, was they announced Overwatch. Uh, now, this will be uh, kind of a mar- arena-type shooter uh, with lots of class systems, um, and it just looked really, really cool. If you haven't seen the trailer, go check out the trailer. It pretty much, the trailer looks like a Pixar movie, which almost made me want them just to make a movie. About the, instead of like a game it's like this is so cool with all the action like they had this big gorilla guy fighting this guy who could like warp off, off into shadows and then they had this girl who would like blink from side to side and then they had the sniper bad chick and oh my god it, the, the trailer was awesome and then when you see the gameplay video it's like wow that that's very very similar to the trailer but it looks like a lot of fun it, you are going to be a class based system it is going to be six for six. Uh, now you will not have like a death match or anything like that. It will be objective based, but you'll have you know your healers, your tanks, your soldiers, yeah, your rogues, your engineers, and stuff like that. So everybody will have their class, but they say that it's going to be really important to balance it uh, between who plays what. And the cool thing is, you know, it is a battle arena type game, but when you die. Of course, you take like 10 seconds or something, then you respawn, and they almost encourage you to switch your character every single time. Hmm. Um, you know, so, okay, didn't work with this person. This team doesn't work with this. This team needs said character or type of character in there. Okay, go ahead and switch. They let you kind of switch on the fly. So it looks like it'll be really, really cool. That sounds um, like, uh, you remember the old school uh, arcade beat em up games that would let you, when you died fully anyway, you could switch the character. Like, I think the X-Men game used to let you do that, right? Yeah, uh, the Ninja Turtles game, you could switch which turtle you wanted to be. Because um, like, the X-Men, they, they each had different powers, so yeah, you could, uh, mid-game, if you had died anyway, switch to someone else with a different power. Yeah. Uh, and, and that worked well. So this, this should be pretty cool to see. But yeah, this Overwatch game, I believe they're starting a beta in 2015. Uh, no word as of yet to when the full game will be released, but knowing Blizzard, we're probably about like a decade away from that happening. <laughs> <laughs> because Blizzard likes to just drag everything out. Now, I will say this, they never released a fully polished game. I mean, never released an unfully polished game, I should say. Their games almost always come out just spectacular. So mm-hmm. there is something to be said about that. But yeah, I just can't... I Overwatch, really, when I saw this trailer, go out and watch the trailer and tell me you don't want just a movie of this. I, I dare you to tell me you don't want a movie of this. But uh, those that was some of the biggest stuff that came out in BlizzCon. But let us know, is there anything else that you were really excited about from BlizzCon? Is there anything we missed here? Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Worst My Face on Twitter, uh, WorstMyFace.com, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But I think that's going to be about wrap it up for us tonight. What do you think, Brendan? Uh, that seems like a good time to head on out and you know, hit that dusty trail. Well, well, then, as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. <laughs>